Let's hear a minute of something that um, really is what in the United States made us love these guys like everybody over there already had. I want to hold your hand. Right, okay. Oh yeah, I tell you something I think you'll understand And I say that something I want to hold your hand I want to hold your hand I want to hold your hand How long did it take you to do this song? Uh... Just a day, just an afternoon, I think. Yeah. Um, and but they, they worked it out pretty well. And the nice thing about that is, is the vocal harmonies they were doing. You know, when you've got, I want to hold your hand, they hit that high sort of open fourth, mm -hmm. which is uh, a great sound. Um, that was a kind of hallmark of their early days. They latched on very quickly to what, what worked and what sold. And they were very commercial in their minds. I mean, so they, they got a, a voicings like that, they knew excited people. They knew that it excited people when they shook their heads. Uh, it was all pretty calculated they, stuff. They, they had it together though. They knew yeah, what they I, were doing. Um, why wasn't that on like the first English album? Well, because Brian and I, you know, we, we sort of worked out a, a game plan once we had a succession of hits. And we said we'd try and do four singles a year, and maybe a couple of albums a year. But the albums, we would try and give people as, as good value for money as possible. So we crammed, generally, about 14 titles onto an album. And the album was completely fresh. And they, they, no one would ever, ever have heard the stuff before. So we reasoned that if we put a, a single on the album, we'd be, be giving people short measure because they already got it. Right. So we had this policy of not putting singles on record, on the album. <laughs> Day in the Life was very much a collaboration because when John first played it to me, as he did Strawberry Fields, just strumming away, mm -hmm. it didn't have a middle and it was a very short song. And um, we just started cutting it and I said, well, how, what, what are we going to do there? And he said to Paul, have you got anything we can put in here? Paul said, not really. So I've got this song which I've been trying to get something out of. It doesn't go, it doesn't go very far. And again, it had nothing to do with John's song. Woke up, got out of bed, <laughs> completely different tempo, a little jazzy little tune. And John said, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> we put it in there. And I thought, how can you put these two bits together? But Paul was very clever. He said, look, don't put it too near your song. Well, we put in a bit that separates it. Right. And um, to keep it, keep it, you know, and I, we had these 24 bars of nothing. And in order to keep together, um, Paul was banging away on the piano. We had Mel counting out the bars, which you can hear, putting tape echo on him. We even had an alarm clock to let us know when the 24 bars were up. Oh, that's what they were. Okay. And, and I thought, what the hell are we going to put in here? Maybe a guitar solo, maybe I'll have to write something. And nobody had any idea, really, until they came and said, we want a symphony orchestra. And I said, yeah. We've never had a symphony orchestra. They said, okay, boys, you can have a symphony orchestra, but let's not be too expensive. You can have half a symphony orchestra. <laughs> I, I was still a very good EMI man. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so we booked 42 musicians. And I said, well, okay, you what are you going to get, get them to do? And they said, well, we tell them to play anything they like. <laughs> I said, you can't do that. <laughs> I said, why not? I said, because if you ask them to play anything, they won't, they won't play anything coherent at all. They won't know what to play. They are conditioned to playing something with music stuck in front of them. Yeah. So Paul said, OK, write something. Put something. <laughs> I said, well, what do I write? He said, anything. <laughs> We're going around in circles. And then he had this idea. He said, 
look, why don't you start with the orchestra very quiet? And then he thought a bit more. He said, start on their lowest note and end on their highest note. How about that? I said, okay, it might work. You know, I knew we'd done pretty, something pretty important. I was a bit scared, I must confess, about how, how people would receive it, in particular Day in the Life. Uh, because it was pretty avant-garde, you know. But curious enough, my old enemy, Alan Livingston of Capitol Records, <laughs> was on a visit to God, my boss in EMI, mm -hmm. or my former boss in EMI, and he came into the studios. I said, well, this will be a good guinea pig. Come in, Alan, I want to play you something. And I played him Day in the Life. And the look on his face was wonderful. He was gobsmacked. <laughs> and I said, do you think it'll sell? <laughs> he said, when can I get a copy? 